people, give me an A, give me a C, give me a V. What's that stand for? Asinine claims about vinegar. More specifically, apple cider vinegar. Now a little history about this magical elixir of the god. It was first created by a wizard who harvested apples out of the Garden of Eden. And then he sourced some vinegar from the ancient Romans. He cast a magic spell on it and kablam! apple cider vinegar. And then he went on to sell it because of all the miraculous things that can happen. Oh! As far as controlling blood glucose, losing weight, preventing cancer, hell, it can even help you have a baby. But do all these claims have any truth behind them or is it just a bunch of bullshit? And that's what we're really gonna go and discover today. Now, before all you apple cider vinegar lovers say, well, my Aunt Gertrude back in Iowa, she drinks gosh darn 18 gallons of apple cider vinegar a day, and she hasn't been sick in over 180 years. She is gosh darn immortal. Just know that if you like it, hey, I have no problem with it. If you feel like it works really good for you, hey, awesome. What we're gonna do is what we always do. We're going to look at the evidence instead of just the opinions you might see all over the internet. Now, if you want to debate this with me, awesome. But if you start quoting Dr. Axe or Dr. Oz for your research, I will ban you. So let's just dive right into it. Uh, I have about 18 research studies pulled up as far as the various claims that apple cider vinegar makes. Now, these studies include both apple cider vinegar and vinegar as a standalone, but they all come together and basically <laughs> are, the, are the same thing as far as the benefits that have been being claimed. So enough of my blabbing. Let's just, let's just dive into all these claims. This is going to be a little bit of a lengthy video, so just sit tight. So the first claim I made about apple cider vinegar is it can help with blood sugar control. Now there's actually a little bit of truth to this. So in this study, in humans, consumption of vinegar prior to a carbohydrate containing meal has been shown to reduce blood glucose response by approximately 20 to 30 percent. However, it should be noted that total area under the curve for blood glucose two hours after a meal was not different between a group that consumed vinegar and the one that did not. So basically, the vinegar just blunts the blood glucose response. But at the end of the day, after two hours, it's about the same thing. Uh, what else here? Basically, the point with the blood glucose thing is it may be helpful in people that are diabetic, but in a non-diabetic population, this claim really has no substance to it at all. Ooh, the second claim, weight loss. Now, I know a lot of people take the apple cider vinegar for weight loss, but I'm fully convinced that this is because apple cider vinegar tastes so horrible that it makes you nauseous and that you don't want to eat at all. Um, there's only been one study to date in humans with apple cider vinegar in humans. And what happened is a guy named Kondo, a Japanese guy, recruited 155 obese Japanese individuals and assigned them to either 15 milliliters of apple cider vinegar, 30 milliliters of apple cider vinegar, or placebo. Uh, what they found is the 15 milliliter group lost 1.2 kilograms, the 30 milliliter group lost 1.9 kilograms, and the placebo group remain the same. Now, on the surface, this looks like awesome. Apple cider vinegar works awesome. But it should be noted in studies like this with obese subjects, their nutrition is, as far as what they report, is usually pretty inaccurate. And then also, this study was published back in 2009, and it hasn't been replicated yet. Um, so, although the point with this study is, although vinegar consumption may increase satiation or the feeling of fullness uh, to some extent, a lot more research needs to be done in terms of if apple cider vinegar can uh, cause weight loss. Uh, Lex claim, apple cider vinegar can help prevent 
cardiovascular disease. Main point here, no study to date has been performed examining the effects of regular vinegar consumption on outcomes such as cardiovascular events or mortality. Therefore, more research needs to be done. Now, there's some pretty convincing research in rats, but that necessarily doesn't cross over into humans. All right, next claim. Apple cider vinegar can prevent cancer. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to need this to get through this. Hold on. Okay. Now, as far as preventing cancers, uh, there is a small animal study um, showing the anti-cancer effects of, of vinegar. However, Observational studies in humans have been a mixed bag of results. Some have shown that people who consume vinegar have decreased rates of cancer, while some have increased rates of cancer. So again, mixed bag claim cannot be supported at this time. Will apple cider vinegar make your skin glow? Uh, no. <laughs> It's not. And I'm looking at this study, and this is this is kind of funny. It says, um, moreover, chemical burns have been attempted <laughs> or have been caused by apple cider vinegar when you apply it on your skin to like remove a mole. I, I wouldn't drink it for skin care. Again, it's not gonna do a gosh darn thing for your skin. All right, on to the next claim. Can apple cider vinegar give you some pearly whites? Let's see. Apple cider vinegar has been claimed to whiten teeth and improve bad breath. Well, I can count me in. However, no evidence to support these claims. And vinegar is very acidic, so you would think it would ruin your teeth. But the good news is there is one research study showing that apple cider, apple cider vinegar can help clean your dentures. <laughs> Awesome! <laughs> oh, the next one. Can apple cider vinegar help with allergies? Claims for this and the evidence are very, very weak. Today, only one study on vinegar and allergies has been performed in humans. This study, seven subjects with food allergies to egg, chicken, lentils were subjected to skin prick tests in which foods were prepared with or without wine vinegar. The foods prepared with vinegar resulted in a reduction in reaction during the skin prick test. But it should be noted that vinegar is acidic and likely denatured proteins similar to the denaturization of proteins that occur in the stomach as part of the dietary protein digestion. So basically the point is it's very unclear if it does anything with allergies. Okay, next one. And this is probably one of the more popular ones. Apple cider vinegar helps prevent inflammation, specifically from arthritis or other inflammatory conditions. However, no evidence to support this claim. In an animal model of colitis, large doses of vinegar reduced inflammation, improved gut bacterial population, and attenuated body weight loss. To date, this data has not been replicated in humans, and there is no human data supporting these claims. Again, just because it shows something in rats doesn't mean it's gonna work in, in humans. All right, on to the next claim. Can apple cider vinegar help you have a baby? Hell, you could even name it Apple if it does like that weird ass celebrity that named her, her baby Apple. Uh, the only human study along these lines to date was a small study of seven Japanese women with PCOS that did not have a normal menstrual cycle. After consumption of 15 grams of vinegar daily for 90 to 110 days, oh lord that sounds terrible, four of the seven women regained their menstrual cycle and this was thought to be due to vinegar's effect on normalizing insulin resistance commonly associated with PCOS. However, a lot more research with a lot more subjects needs to be done to support this claim. Oh, here's one of my favorite. Apple cider vinegar can help detox your body. Two main points here. You have a liver and a kidney for a reason. <laughs> no supplement, magical drink, blah, 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 yada, 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 is gonna detox your body. So, no. Just, just no, it's not going to detox you on the cellular level. <laughs> God, these kind of videos drive me crazy because you see these crazy ass claims about stuff and you're like, who buys into this? Okay. 
Next one, pH balance in the body. A lot of claims have been made about apple cider vinegar making your body more alkaline, but your body highly regulates acidity in the body uh, between about 7.35 and 7.45. I mean, there's nothing you can really do to that. But if you did, even slight variations in this acidity can <laughs> result in severe illness. Fortunately, there is no evidence that human diets have a significant effect on blood pH in individuals with normal kidney function, and there is no evidence to support the claim that apple cider vinegar can help with pH. Now, there's that's the kind of the majority of the the most uh, quoted claims. Now, there's other claims too that it helps with acid reflux, osteoporosis prevention, dandruff treatment, energy booster, reduction in cramps, hiccups, hiccups. That's a weird one, and many other claims. But to date, really, there's no evidence to support these claims. So, enough of my rambling. What's, what's the take-home point here? The take-home point is a majority of the claims made about apple cider vinegar really don't have the evidence to support them. The only claim maybe that it, you know, we can support with apple cider vinegar is it reduces the glycemic response to a meal and potentially increases satiation or the feeling of fullness. And so therefore individuals who are diabetic or who may be trying to, you know, kind of combat some of the, the effects of being a diabetic, you might realize some benefits from the apple cider vinegar. Second main point, if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And this is the case with apple cider vinegar as well. Main point number three, do your research, people. Look for evidence-based claims about all these fads and trends and everything you're hearing about. An awesome resource is examine.com. Com. This will have accurate information about supplements, you know, these, these diet trends, nutrition trends, and everything in between. Well referenced, good information. You really can't go wrong with going to examine.com. Fourth main point hey, if you really like apple cider vinegar and you feel like it works really well for you, Keep on taking it. You know, who am I to say? I realize, you know, that evidence from a scientific perspective and personal experience kind of go hand in hand. What I do is I just look off the evidence because, I mean, without it, it's just really one person's opinion. And your opinion may work for you as far as, you know, it relates to these, these trends and diets. And last main point, just put your critical thinking cap on when you see all these trends. As a society as a whole, and I'm going to get out of my soapbox here for a second, we tend to take things at face value nowadays. We don't actually research at all. We see, you know, some fitness expert on the internet claim something and we hold it as truth as opposed to doing the research. And this is the same with, with supplements too. Hell, I hope you question and research everything I'm saying as well. I mean, that's just doing your homework and you know not spending money on things that are worthless or are just built on a bunch of hype. So that is all I have for apple cider vinegar for today. Thank goodness. If you have a buddy that's on the apple cider vinegar train, Please share this video with them. If you want other videos on endurance training, general nutrition, and supplementation, subscribe to the Endure Elite YouTube channel or head on over to the Endure Elite blog at www.endureelite.com. Get social with us on Instagram and our Facebook Training and Nutrition Club page. And until next time, my endurance friends, stay fueled, stay focused, stay fast, and stay informed.